before when I was younger, I was like, okay, they got a Rolls Royce, I'm gonna listen. Oh, they got a $100,000 Rolex, I'm gonna listen. But I'll take a hungry, crazy burning desire, no college education over someone that has a, you know, an MBA from yeah. some university, but they, they sleep until 10 in the morning and they bitch moan and complain and make excuses. What's up guys, welcome to another episode of Manny Talks. Super excited for you to watch this episode. We have a special guest tonight. He has been traveling the world over 75 countries, international bestseller author and husband. He's here with us, Alex Morton. Appreciate you for coming in. Of course. Thank you so much. Of course, excited to be here, excited to give the people what they need to go to the next level. Let's go. Excited, bro, excited to have you. Um, we, we've been filming a few episodes back to back in a few weeks and uh, I was looking forward to have you here and I'm glad that, you know, we made time to, to make it happen. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about, you know, the audience for those of you that don't know you. Let's take it back 10 years, right? Who is Alex? Um, I know you made your first million by 25. Yep. So yep. take Before us back yep. a few years, right? How was that initial kickoff for Alex into, yeah. into yeah. business? Um, well, you know, I grew up in um, uh, Columbus, Ohio, in a small town, mm -hmm. and uh, I tell everybody I was, we were like right in the middle. You know, there was rich and wealthy people over here, it was us in the middle, and then there was like the broke and the poor over here. So when I was like a, a little kid, I remember going to school, getting dropped off by, you know, my mom, and I remember seeing like Range Rovers, mm. Mercedes, you know, those fat, huge Lexus. Um, SUVs and stuff and like we were always good and like, my parents did well but I always wondered from a young age like yeah. what's the difference between a uh, 8,000 square foot home us and then these people that are like struggling literally mm. you know week week over week just to feed their family and keep a roof over their their heads right so I kind of grew up with this like business mindset you know I tell people I kind of had a cheat code mm -hmm. because my parents were entrepreneurs my mom worked oh, for okay. Tony Robbins back in the day wow yeah, uh, like I got rich dad, poor dad, I don't know, fourth grade. We were playing cash flow quadrant, the board yeah. game from Robert Kiyosaki Fire. in high school. Um, so I kind of grew up with this mentality of like, own your own business, do whatever it takes. Mm -hmm. And then I left Ohio at 18. I went to Arizona State, okay. got into a lot of trouble, hanging out with the wrong people, doing the wrong stuff. And I got into entrepreneurship. You know, first mm -hmm. it was real estate. I was uh, taking other agents listings. Okay and promoting them online as my own. And then you would call mm -hmm. me about this condo and I would mm -hmm. act like it's my listing, but it wasn't. And then like I got wholesale deal type yeah, of stuff. Yeah, and I was getting deals, you know, like that. And I was like, wow, this is pretty cool. You know, no, no boss, it's not a job I work for myself, it's pretty dope. Okay. And then I got into uh, relationship marketing, direct, sell, direct sales mm -hmm. at 21. Wow. You know, went to a meeting, um, thought it was too good to be true, thought it was one of those things, found out right. it wasn't, and then I went crazy and shit 20 76 countries later and i'm nice. sitting here talking to you it's crazy right it's crazy how it, your, your influence for that you know your mom your dad you're, you're raising that environment um and i know you're super big a, into you know mindset self-development self-growth yeah. and all of that and that's what you teach all across the world how important is environment for for people that are in this industry yeah, you know, it, trying to grow yeah environment is more important than your genetics like if two 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 white people in uh boise idaho have a kid and mom and dad are speaking english mm -hmm. that kid comes out they ship that kid to uh you know spain that little baby's gonna grow up speaking what language spanish, spanish right 100%. so your environment is actually more important than your genetics. Like if, you, if people want to say, Alex, how do I change my mindset, my actions, my emotions? How do I change? I say, man, ch change your environment. And your environment is not just where you sleep and where you eat. It's the books you read, the people you talk to, the mm. friends you associate with, whether you let Fox and CNN and NBC News media infect your subconscious mind or not. So your environment's a bunch of different things, but environment's probably one of the most important factors and cornerstones of people that go out into the world and crush it and live on purpose and make a lot of money and everybody else that struggles just to, you know, survive day to day. And it's one thing that most people agreed on. 
it doesn't matter what industry you're in or what you believe on, what religion you believe on. Yep. I think most people agree to the fact that you become who you hang out with. You know, you become what Absolutely. you think about. Yeah. So yeah. let's talk a little bit about, you know, that start that you had. You went real estate, direct sales, and then you are right now just crushing it all around the world. What was it for you that you said, you know, I want to go crush it. I want to go build this business. Were you already doing self-development back then? What was it? Yeah, I mean, before I got introduced to my mentor, Bob Proctor, at 21, mm -hmm. um, <coughs> excuse me, you know, I wasn't really reading that many books, like, to be okay. honest. You know, I know I know who Tony Robbins was yeah. and is. Um, I heard the name Zig Ziglar from my parents, but I wasn't, like, into the books and the audios and the tapes and the videos. Mm -hmm. But I always had this desire, just go, go win. Like, I, at 18, I remember being so frustrated sitting in my dorm room at Arizona State, this tiny little bed, sharing it with this other guy. We had one toilet and one sink for four dudes mm -hmm. in college, which is, which is disgusting. And I remember looking in the mirror, like brushing my teeth, thinking like, you know, like, fuck this. Like, yeah. I need to, this is not, like, I, 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 I got to find a way to win. Because I always wanted a big home, you know, nice car, I wanted to travel. I want to go to Europe. Like wanted it blows my mind how few people have even been to Europe before. Yep. And it's like, we're over there, you know, once a quarter. So it's like, even at a young age, I didn't have the personal development yet, mm -hmm. but I had this crazy burning desire to go out there and, and crush it and build an amazing life for me and my, you know, family and future family. Self-development is everything. Uh, and one of the biggest thing is Bob Proctor, right? He's, he played a big role, I know, Major. In, in your career. Um, how did you get introduced to him and how were you able, my question is, how were you able to build that relationship yeah. so close to him, right, that most people strive for, right? I would love to, to, you know, to have been mentored by him. Right. How were you able to build that relationship with him? So at 21 years old, uh, I get to $400 a month in okay. my first direct selling company, energy mm -hmm. drinks, protein shakes, stuff like that, right? The CEO calls me randomly like on a, like on a Friday night and says, hey mm -hmm. man, Meet me at the, the, the plane hangar. He had a private okay. jet. I'm going to Charlotte tomorrow, North Carolina, from Arizona. I want to bring you. I want you to share your story in front of like 400 people. Mm -hmm. So I played it all cool on the phone. Dude, You're I like, hang up the phone. I'm up. like, dude, jumping up and down like I just made like $50 million <laughs> on my private jet. What the hell is going on? So I go to the hangar. I get on the jet. Uh, we fly to Charlotte. Mm -hmm. I go up for the first time on stage. My okay. first real stage, like 450 people. I tell my story. Obviously, I'm very fiery and passionate yeah, today, yeah, and I yeah. was just as fiery and passionate as I was back then. So people are like, "Damn! Like this kid is, like this kid's Hungry. gonna do something big." So I go into the hallway to the water fountain. Never forget it. Go into the hallway mm -hmm. to the water fountain, and it's like Bob is coming around the corner. It's almost like he's floating. Okay. I can still see the suit he's wearing, and I didn't know who he was. He's got white mm -hmm. hair. 2011. He comes up to me and he kind of just stares at me. Okay. And then he says, you're going to do great things in this business. You had no idea who Didn't he was. Didn't know who he was. Wow. I go back into the room. I'm talking to people in our, in our team. And I said, dude, this old guy came up to me. <laughs> and then all of a sudden the MSC says, please welcome to the stage, Bob okay. Proctor. And I'm like, oh, wow. So this guy's like a speaker and this. And everyone's round of a standing mm -hmm. ovation, acting like he's some godlike figure. So I'm like, okay. So then we get, I kind of get into his information and his wife, this is where I got lucky. His mm -hmm. wife was in the company. I was the and young- the direct sales company yes. that you were in. Okay. So I was like the young superstar on the rise, fastest yeah, to six yeah. figures, seven figures. So eventually got to the point where Bob said, listen, if you come to Canada where he lived, Toronto, mm -hmm. and you do meetings for my wife's young team, I'll coach you. Oof, I'm, I might do, I'm on the next fight out. So the relationship just started to go and go and go and then eventually grew to the point where even when he was on his deathbed mm -hmm. uh, during COVID, you know, we were planning an event. Uh, we were going to do an event together before Break the Code. It was before actually going to be called, I think he named it uh, The Millionaire, the Mentor and the Millionaire, something like that. And then, um, you know, pretty much as he's passing away, he said, mm -hmm. you know, it's your turn. Like, take, take everything I've taught you and carry it into the next generation. So that's what I'm really super passionate about. You're on that mission right now. Because it's like, you know, Andrew Carnegie... Um, Napoleon Hill, Earl Nightingale, Bob Proctor, and now me. And I take that very, very serious. That's why I'm doing these events and going all over the yeah. world. And my second book is coming out July 4th. 
You know? I saw you uh, got uh, number two in Wall Street. Yeah. Uh, in the Wall so we Street. launched it digitally. You know what? Number two, Wall Street Journal. Let's go. Congratulations, awesome. bro. Thank you. Uh, New York is next, huh? huh? New, York, New York Times? New York Times. That was next? the target, actually. Okay. But that one you got to sell like a I bunch, don't know, no? Dude, like a million or something. Like we okay. did like 10,000 downloads in a certain amount of time and we hit Wall Street Journal. Nice. But for New York Times, it's like. It's heavy, huh? It's crazy. Okay. But we just built this friendship, this relationship, this mentee you know, mentor. And, you know, he was definitely the biggest mentor, uh, in terms of like financial success mm -hmm. that I, I had. And I, he coached me from 2011 until the day he passed away. It's crazy. Your mentor changes who you become if you really know how to pick them right. And you being such a successful person, I wanted to ask you, what do you look for? And because I know you're really big on this, you're really big into you know, looking for the right people to listen to, protecting your energy, yep. right? You don't share your time with everybody. Um, you don't, you know? So what do you look for on people to be mentored by? You know, the people that you look up to, your mentors, what specific things or guidance do you look for? Yeah, I look for the total package. I mean, at this point, being 33, almost 34 mm -hmm. in October, uh, being almost three years married, you know, I seek out people that kind of have all the boxes checked. Okay. Before, when I was younger, I was like, okay, they got a Rolls Royce, I'm going to listen. Oh, they got a mm. $100,000 Rolex, I'm going to listen. But then as you get older and you realize this material stuff is cool for the moment. Yep. And then, because it's like, listen, I get my, uh, you know, I got my, full, my first Rolls Royce, mm -hmm. right? The first, the first two months, nobody drink coffee in it. <laughs> nobody touch anything. And then, dude, 90 days later, I'm sitting in there soaking, soaking yep. sweaty from the gym. It's just another energy car. drinks. It's just a freaking car. Watches. Oh my God, don't scratch it. Don't scratch it. Now all my shit's got, you know, dings and bings on them. So you get to a certain point at about 50, 50, at about 30, when I turned 30, mm -hmm. that's when my, my, my mental kind of shifted. So like the reason why I, I talk a lot about like Ed Milet, uh -huh. husband, father, massive business success. You know, Rob Dyrdek's birthday was yesterday. I was talking with him. Husband, father, massive business success. You know, I know lots of people hate on Grant Cardone, but I'm like, listen, man, you can hate on him all you want. He appears, I've seen him in like private mm -hmm. moments. He's a great father. He's probably a great husband. He's a great business person, right? So it's like, I look at the total package now. I can still like listen to somebody on maybe like their ability to crush it in sales, but I'll yeah. only listen to that part. But that at, is this, specific at this point set. in my life, I, I'm only listening to like, you know, older men have what I want, but they have they have everything, the full package that I want. Yep. Yeah, because it's not it's not only about the money. It, I feel you get to a point that you realize, because um, we all start because of the money. We all want more money. We all want the lifestyle. Absolutely. But it just gets to a point that you like what what is all about. It's all yeah. the same. It's all yeah. the same. Um, now, what about mentees, right? People that you want to help out and kind of like give you know all the wisdom and all the years. What do you look for? The first, the first thing is desire and hunger. I mean, I'll take, I'll take a hungry, crazy burning desire, no college education over someone that has a, you know, an MBA from yeah. some university, but they, they sleep until 10 in the morning and they bitch moan and complain and make excuses. Hunger and desire. I mean, the, the, the hungry guy is going to, is going to outwork and probably even outdevelop than someone who's just you know, went to the best schools mm -hmm. and the best family. And I've seen it, you know, you, you see this, like lots of the multimillionaire, billionaire people, even in America, like a lot of them dropped out of school, got yep. terrible grit. I mean, Gary V had like a 1.8 GPA. Um, Mike Rubin, mm -hmm. who's, I don't know, worth three or $4 billion, owns Fanatics and all this stuff. I listened to some of his interviews. He was like terrible grades. So like I... Went to ASU. I actually finished school. People think oh, I dropped you? out. Oh, wow. I have a four-year degree in uh, biz no, uh, effective communication from the Hugh Downs. That helped. Hugh Downs School of Communication from ASU. I walked the whole thing. But I, <laughs> I, I stayed because my mom wanted me to graduate. Okay. But when, when I'm looking for people to put my time and energy and effort into, man, I want I want hunger, desire. And honestly, it's, it's the will to win. Yeah. Like when I got involved in sales and leadership mm -hmm. and marketing... Dude, I didn't need someone to motivate me. Like I fired my success team very mm -hmm. fast in my first company because I said, dude, there's people making eighty thousand dollars a month. Dude, I, like I'll run through the wall. They gonna make it happen. 
a lot of people don't understand just the fact that that you're here and you're listening to this and you have access to this information just that itself has got to motivate you like you don't need someone to just knock on your door and be like yo let's go let's go let's go because eventually that's going to be gone one day right and you're only going to have you so yep. Yep. you know what i mean yeah. <laughs> it's all about that so now that you st talked about education um Talk to us a little bit about your opinion in the current educational system as it is. Yeah. Right? Because a lot of this information that we talked about that I've learned from you myself personally is not taught in the educational system, right? They don't talk about this in school. And Bob Proctor is really big. on it. He was big on that. What's your thoughts on that? Do you think that's going to change at some point? Or what, yeah, what I think do you it's think? Yeah, I think it's changing right now. I mean, you know, the quote I love to always use is, you know, formal education will make you a living but mm -hmm. self-education has the has the ability to make you a fortune um and that's the truth you know when you look up the the people that built our educational system in this country yeah you know one of their famous quotes was we want a nation of workers not thinkers right mm. you know thinking is one of the highest skills we can develop as a human being Right, the the ability to think and put an image on the on our mind and develop a strategy and a game plan yeah. and then will ourselves through thinking to go out there and make it happen. So I don't know. I see lots of different articles devaluing um, a four year degree now. Listen, I think you're going to be an engineer, a doctor, a dentist, a lawyer. Yeah, you need to go to school, man. You need to be you need to be smart. Yeah, you there's gotta, certain things you got to do. You yeah, gotta I got, learn. if I got a health problem, I want I want homie to have a yeah. four year degree from some or eight year degree from some medical school. But, you know, if you're getting into business, you know, you know, insurance, solar, network marketing, door-to-door uh, -door sales. Like I coach a lot of people in mm -hmm. different industries. It's like, dude, you, you, you go to the you know, YouTube University is solid. You know, going to seminars and events is solid. Like, there's enough out there where if you have to pay your own way, like, you're going to go get a degree in business. It's like, dude, your, your professor drives a Mazda. Yep. And I'm not talking. I'm not talking shit about college. I have a four year degree. People ask me their opinion all the time. Should I go to school? I say go to school to network, to build friendships, to build relationships, and then go take some classes that can help you make money. Like if I could go back, dude, I would learn. I would have learned Spanish and French. Yep, yep, yep. Or Portuguese. Right. <laughs> um, I took intro to acting. Okay. And that's that's helped me become a public speaker now. Even communication. I mean, there's skills that you uh, that will help. Yeah. But the biggest part is, is what you said, being intentional about networking and meeting the right people. Um, and Greg Cardone, I think he talks about it. It's like, if I'm going to send my kids to school, like I'm going to send them to NYU. I'm going to send them to these schools that Absolutely. they're going to be hanging out with people of influence that eventually will become people of influence. So that's it. It's, that's, that's, it's like the country clubs. You know, they don't they don't charge 150 grand yep. a year at these country clubs in Boca because of the mm -hmm. stupid golf course. They do it because of the conversations in the in the locker room. And some people will say, oh, it's the rich boys club or the rich girls club. Yeah, it is. 100%. And you're not a part of the club. <laughs> so get your ass in the club. Like, you know, people people can complain and moan, oh, it's not fair. It's not fair. Dude, the, the world is, it's not fair. That's why you got to get to work. everyone gets their, their, their what? Their, their cards that they're dealt. And then we got to do the best with the cards that we're dealt. Instead of making excuses, you got to go out there and say, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to go out there and figure the it out. You I'm going to make do. it happen. The way you gotta do, it. and I feel everybody has the same potential. Just people don't recognize it. You know, they don't they don't take action towards that. Right. Um, right now, what are you focusing on? What is your main focus for people to know? You know, what industry specifically are you in? I see you traveling all over the world. Yeah. We were talking about that you're going on stage right now. You know, you're doing keynotes, which is great because you get, you get to spread the world out there. You know, what what's your main focus right now? Yeah, I mean, it's really. Uh you know, it's, it, it's always been impact. It hasn't always been impact. At first it was like, I need money now. Yeah. And it's still like, I want, I want some money. You know, like when this, when this company reached out to me, Hey, we want you to come speak 60 minutes, this and that and the other. I'm like, okay, it's 50 grand, you know, and they sent the wire. So it's like when people say, Oh, it's not about the money. You know, these people are full of shit. Yeah. Um, it, it, they're, 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 it's a, it's business like money is, but it's only a part of it. Like I am big on growth contribution. So, you know, I'm part of a direct sales company mm -hmm. in the financial educational space. We've done over a billion since 2013. Okay. You know, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm in Kazakhstan doing an event with like 3000 people uh, next month. So I'm traveling, building that company up. But then like over here, it's like the Alex Morton brand. Mm -hmm. You know, the last two weekends I was at different events where it was mortgage people, real estate, insurance, solar. Nobody in my direct sales industry was even in these, in these rooms. Yep. Um, so now it's just like, 
I want to help everybody, not just one industry. I want to, I want to impact everybody, help everybody increase their sales and their leadership and just, and just spread the truth. And it's the same. It's the same concepts. No matter, I feel no matter what business you're in, it's all the same, the same principles. Everything's recruiting, building, sales, leadership, marketing, building a brand. It's all the same. It's all, it's all the science of success. That's one thing I feel network marketing has that it gives a lot of people is just the foundation to all those skills that you don't get anywhere else. And you get it for pennies on the dollars. Like I, people ask me and I was like, I will always be grateful for the time I spent, you know, in the right circles and the right environment and the right company because that gave me the foundation for everything. And I feel a lot of people just kind of like devalue that at some point. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, it's like where, where else can you go and get around people that are making 10 grand a month or 10 grand a week or 10 grand a day? Yep, yep. Yep. And learn, get in their minds and build relationships with these people. You can't go find that. Like, I know what it costs to go hire mentors. You know, I've, I've spent probably close to a million dollars now on, on mentors, dude. Like, it's not it's not cheap. But in, in that profession, you can get around these people mm -hmm. and learn. For pennies in the dollar compared oh for God, what it costs. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Through, throughout your career, right, everything you have done now in direct sales, traveling the world, I mean, traveling the world, I'm pretty sure you have experienced so much, right? Um, what are your thoughts on building international? Um, I tell a lot of people, you have to get out of the Miami, you have to get out of U.S. Because when you start traveling, you get to see, you get to have a whole different perspective of the world, different economies, how people live, that they don't have anything, that they literally live a couple dollars a month. And people are making a lot more. Miami's mm -hmm. baby money. That's what a guy told me in London, right? So it's like, what are your thoughts on taking your business international, no matter what industry, right? Because I know it's different, different yeah, industries, but yeah. what are your thoughts on going international? I mean, in my career, the biggest momentum, the biggest commissions, the biggest checks and incomes have more so come from international markets. Mm. You know, I was in 10 countries last month in Europe. Jeez. The hunger and desire level is way higher in other parts of the world. It just, it is what it is. You know, in America, you have so many opportunities. You can get in the Amazon and the Shopify yeah. and, the, and the trading and the wholesale real estate, real estate agent, fixing and flipping, insurance, solar, pest control. Like we could sit here and name a hundred opportunities a young guy down the street can go get involved in for less than a thousand dollars. Right. You go to, you know, places in Mexico, places in Colombia, places in uh, I was in Warsaw, Poland. There's not that many opportunities. That's crazy. In these places. Right. So it just I mean, listen, I'm, I was born in Houston, Texas. I'm an American. Mm -hmm. I love this country. I hope we can turn it around next year. But at the end of the day, there's a different level of passion and hunger and desire in other parts of the world. So if someone's watching this and they have the ability to build in other markets internationally, 100%. Scale your company outside of the US and watch your numbers yep. go through the roof. And you can meet people on social media. Like this. It's just as easy for me to meet somebody in Beijing, China, as it is to meet somebody in Brickle, Miami. Yep. Also, I, I feel the, the level of wealth kind of like opens up your eyes uh, to a whole different dimension. Um, you, you, I was using Dubai last week. I know you've been to Dubai yep. a couple of times. You get to see, you know, you get to see because you're here in Miami, right? Or you're here, you know, in your hometown and you're kind of like this, right? Mm -hmm. Where it's like, all right, this is the guy that makes the most money in town. And you think that's like impossible to do. But then you go international and you start meeting these people that make 10, 20 times that. And you're like, oh, wow. You know, oh, what I mean? dude, growing up in Bexley, Ohio, there was a guy I'm still friends with his uh, kids to this day, but he was like a high powered attorney. And mm -hmm. I think somebody told me he was making between like five and you know, $8 million a year. Okay. And I remember being in high school thinking like, dude, 5 million a year, you know, that I, I, you're like a billionaire. I thought you were yeah, like, you, you like, could you own like... the New York Yankees at $5 million a year. Right. And then you kind of get out of this little bubble and you're talking to people, you know, I have some friends now that, you know, have hundreds of millions in real estate, you know, grant a mentor and a buddy and business partner of mine. He's got what? $5 billion in real estate. So, when you travel, you expand your awareness yep. on both ends of the spectrum. You know, I'll never forget some of the trips I've been on, like to Tegucigalpa, Honduras, and seeing like poverty You've at been the to some places, lowest huh? level. <laughs> Lagos, Nigeria, seeing what? 100 pound skinny women carrying gallons of water buckets on their heads. You know, being in uh, Lima, Peru, getting picked up at the airport, and the guy that picks me up says, put your window up. 
And I'm like, why? He said, you have a watch on your wrist? I said, yeah. He said, they will literally, they will literally machete. Like real, I mean, this is like real stuff. Like you, there's been stories of people on motorbikes with machetes where you, you stick your hand out the window with the Rolex on, bro. They will Just take your whole on. wrist. So traveling is amazing to see both ends of the spectrum, you know, being in places like Dubai. I remember I, we stayed at the hotel where they paid Beyonce like $26 million dollars. That's that Atlantis, right? Yeah. That was the, the that new Atlantis Atl hotel. Yeah. You know, so you have like levels like that, and then you have levels down here, and then it gives you a, a better perspective on, you know, the respect you, that we all should have for mm -hmm. money, the ways to make it, the ways to preserve it, the ways to invest it, the ways to keep it. Uh, it opens up your eyes to a whole nother level. Yeah. And I tell people, man, you start making money, instead of buying some watch, man, go, go, go travel the go world. Travel. Go travel the world and, and, and expand your your self-awareness and global awareness on, you know, yeah. the planet. We're working on it. Yeah, of a the little. planet. Yeah. It's, and then also your network changes because once you start expanding, not even if you, if you don't make money, it doesn't matter. Like it's just the people that you get to meet all over the world, your network, your influence, when you come back here, it's completely different. Completely. It's completely different. I have seen that traveling now the past couple of years and it's like, it's different. I would rather travel the world and buy a Ferrari. Like it's just, it is yeah. what it is. Cause yeah. you're stacking up so many experience that it just helps you grow here. Right. Completely. Um, but man, you've been consistent in the industry for over a decade now, yeah. if I'm a run. Yeah. Um, for those people out there that, you know, they're trying to grow in a specific industry, they're trying to stay ahead. What would you say is one thing that helps you stay ahead in your industry? And how, how do you stay first? You know, how do you stay winning it for so many years? Well, for one, I think staying, staying like ahead of trends. Uh, my first company, it was right when like Red Bull, Rockstar, Monster, okay. Five Hour Energies were popping off, right? So mm -hmm. we had a healthy energy drink. So it was very easy mm -hmm. for me to say, hey, instead of putting your dollars into Starbucks and Red Bull, put it into this and get paid to get paid to drink it and talk yeah. about it with your friends. So it was like this, we built a group to, you know, from, from two guys in a dorm room to 96,000 people wow. in four years. Right. And then, you know, from there I spent a little time in a, like a, I don't know, an anti-aging company and it was okay. Mm -hmm. But in 2016, I got involved with financial education when no one, Forex wasn't cool. People kind of heard about this Bitcoin thing, but it wasn't yeah. like Bitcoin. And I said, man, if, if I can get somewhere and wave the flag before everybody else gets there, man, I'm going to I'm gonna become uber wealthy. And that's what happened. So always paying attention to the world mm -hmm. and where the world's going, number one. But even mo most importantly, number two is, dude, is, is it comes back to your desire and your will. Like I, I know I'm not the best recruiter, speaker, trainer in the world in my profession, mm -hmm. but I also know... Nobody has worked harder than me since 2011 in the mm. industry. And it's, no one's going to argue that. Like, yeah, I, got, yeah. I got the miles. I got, like, millions and millions of flight miles on, like, every airline you can imagine. You know what I mean? So I think it comes down to work ethic. Like, the reason why I've been able to stay winning at such a long time is I, I, I still grind and hustle. I don't sit back like I've made these dozens of millions of dollars. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I'm still... Like, let's do it. Let's go. Let's film five podcasts in the next 48 hours. Like, let's let's hustle. Let's grind. Like, I, I still stay in that phase one mentality of, like, there, there's always more. There's always more. So if people are watching this, whatever industry you're in, this is what I will tell you. If you're going to be known for something, be known for work ethic. Mm. Be no, Outwork the people in your group. Outwork the people that came before you. And then try to outwork everybody in the industry. If you do that, you, you can't not win. Like... Work works, 100%. like this four-hour work week bullshit or that work, work. <laughs> work smart, not hard. Yeah, when you have some money, you can invest and you can have passive income. But dude, your first million dollars, you need to work your ass off. I saw a video you posted the other day and you talked about this. Like your first million, don't. It's not about reading the books, or listening to the audios. You gotta get to work. That's part of it, but you have to get to work. You gotta put in the hours. You fit in the books and the audios when you're not doing income producing activities for your business mm. like people say oh, i need to set aside an hour a day to read the book no dude you need to be so busy building your business following up an in insurance or knocking yeah, doors in yeah. Seoul or prospecting for network marketing and then as you're in your car driving or you're at the gym or you're going to the bathroom or you're brushing your teeth or you're making food in your kitchen 
then you can put on then a you plug in the audio yeah and that's what bob told me he's like fit that into you working the the business it's crazy but it's all the same like it doesn't matter how successful you are it just goes back to the same principles and it just that that's that's what I'm trying to you know help people understand and put out the message out there and that information is you have to do the self development like it's a must to have the right mentors to do the self development absolutely to put in the work um, and in your industry public speaking right you have spoken in front of hundreds of thousands of people yeah. what the do, what does Alex feels before you go speak right in front of these people like it's, yeah I mean you know speak I mean? speaking is my happy place I was telling my wife I said. If I had eight hundred million dollars in a bank account, I would still go fly around and go speak on stage mm. and help transform people's lives. Like it's like a drug to me. Um, I just love it, and obviously it gets more fun and more fun because you know, like two weekends ago, backstage with people like David Goggins yeah. and Tim Grover, who coached Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant. Mm -hmm. Like obviously that the elevation of the speaking industry and these different events is uh, is amazing. But you know, when I'm backstage, you still get a little butterflies. And right. I asked Bob this. I said, do you still get nervous? He said, I don't get nervous in a negative way, but I still get like anxious butterflies. But he said, I like that feeling because it keeps me sharp and on my toes. Before I go on stage, whether it's, you know, 40 people yeah. or it's what? 27,000 people at Marlin Stadium at Grant's 10X event a couple years ago. I always ask God to speak to me and through me and give me the the images, the stories, and the concepts to help people change their lives. You talked about your wife. I, I, I admire you and I look up to you in that sense a lot because I mean, we, we met uh, a few years ago um, and I know how selective you were on that aspect. Um, and I wanted to ask you personally, how do you know she was the one? Oh man, it's, uh, I would say it's a feeling we met in London. Okay. No social media, nothing. I think her kind of pushing me away and blowing me off actually drew me in closer. Mm. Um, and I was always told, you know, marry up. Marry somebody smarter than you, sharper than you, brighter than you. And she really is. Like, she speaks way more languages than me. She's a, I know she, she, she's a very private person, so she doesn't like when I start talking about her. But she's very educated. She's very, very smart and wise and sharp and... You know, since meeting her, life's gotten better in, you know, shit every way. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I think when you know, you know. And I never believed that until mm. it actually happened. It happened. But it's just this feeling. And in today's world, I mean, listen, like, they say the most, want, I mean, they say the most important decision a man makes is who he marries. Because that woman, I mean, you're sleeping next to them every night, you're... They're in your ear. They're in your subconscious. They're they're helping raise your your future children. Like, dude, if that's not important, then I don't know what the hell is. It's definitely a big factor. It's huge, huge man. Place. And they say like the best way to be go from a six figure six to seven figures or seven uh -huh. figures eight figures marrying the right person. It's you got big. me it's, thinking. It's big, you know. But I, I'm telling you, at 30, I just had yeah. this mental shift, and I was I was open to getting serious, meeting the right one, and building um, building a future together. How do you balance? Because I mean, you have a lot of responsibilities. You're building you know, teams all over the world. How do you balance your personal life with your business life and how busy you get you know, and what you're you doing? Just, you just do it, man. I mean, I think you, we, me and you cannot, um, we can't really manage, like time's always running. Like people mm. say like time management. I'm kind of, I'm like, well, I don't know if you, I mean, I can't stop and start time. Yeah. All I can do is I can control my focus and my intensity with the minutes that I have, right? I mean, she comes with me when I go okay. on these tours and stuff. She does her thing. I do my thing. Um, but we Definitely kinda, being in the same page. We kind of agreed, like, let's smash this thing super, super hard. Let's make the money we want to make and make the right investments. And then we can, like, you know, go do the whole, you know, have kids thing. Let's go. When are they coming? You're thinking Probably soon? Two three, two, three years. Nice. Two, nice. three. Let's see what happens in this freaking crazy ass country. But two, three years. What do you think about the, the where we at right now? The economy, U.S. You know how the market is. I think doing. it's scary, man. Any I think thoughts? It's, uh, I mean, we we have the blueprints to build our dream home, and we're not building yet because of what's going on in the world. I think there's a lot of uncertainty. Yeah. Um, I think there's poor leadership. I think mm. we all can agree on that. It's mm -hmm. like it's just a joke, man. Like 
it's uh, you travel the world. Everyone, everyone thinks America is like this big laughing circus right now. And it kind of is, yep. you know, from the fentanyl coming up through the Southern border to us being idiots when there's spy balloons circulating the atmosphere a lot of crazy happening. pulling out of afghanistan like i don't i'll stop there because i don't i'm not supposed to talk too much about the political yeah, stuff yeah, but yeah, like yeah. it's um i think it's crazy man i think i think honestly if we don't if we don't make a big change i think we're mm -hmm. headed down a path of uh no return and then when you talk to people like these uber drivers right yeah or who are from cuba they're like they're like i can't believe i can't believe how dumb people in america are like, in tampa this guy was driving me escalate yeah, yeah. business owner he goes, I can't believe how dumb some people are in your country, which is now my country. He said, socialism is the entry point communism. of communism. Yes, sir. And he said, if you, don't, that. if you don't chop the snake's head off early, you're, you're, you're done for. A hundred percent. And I feel people here don't realize that just because they have so many things used for granted. They think it's just gonna be great U.S. forever, you know yeah. what I mean? And there's and when, no downfall. And when you study history, <laughs> when you study history, after so many years, all oh, these coming. empires have fallen. Well, if you look up how how long America has been on top, you're like, oh, whoa, wait a second. Yep, here. yep, yep. And now you've got China, Russia, Iran, all these countries banding together in this BRICS alliance. Everyone, like, dude, everyone wants the first place. It's like, and if U.S. gets too comfortable, it's not gonna be the first one. Yeah, man. Know. And now you're seeing people becoming more vocal about, it, like Patrick Bed David, yeah, Grant yeah. Cardone. They're like, dude, if you guys don't wake up, man, we're 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 in for it. A hundred percent. So I, I mean, I pray we can turn it around. Um, I hope it's not too late. I don't know. Hope it's no. Where is Alex going? What is your? We talk about goals. Your main thing is, you know, imagination, uh, seeing the future self, right before it even happens in the physical. Where do you see yourself going, you know, in the next few years? Yeah. Well, I've always used network marketing as a vehicle for wealth creation okay. and brand awareness, you know, because of that. And, you know, when I, when I can, when somebody calls me about a speaking engagement, they say, you know, why should I hire you? You know, it's like, well, I've done 2 billion in sales. I've helped a thousand people get to six, seven, eight. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, like, yeah, that's yeah. been my, my like, here's, this is my results. But I've used that to create wealth, to invest the right way. Um, but really personal development. Mm. Like I'm only 33 years old. A lot of these guys are in their 50s and, you know, 60s. So I'm going to be doing the that. I'm, I'm doing this forever, man. Like Bob did it until he was in his mid 80s. Uh, with modern technology. When did Bob start it? Do you know? Like, a, how how old was he when he kind of like started into? I think he was he was given this book, Think and Grow Rich. It's well, this is how crazy the universe is. Ready? Uh -huh. The date he was given this book was October twenty first, when he was in his twenties. Mm -hmm. I was born on October twenty first in nineteen eighty nine, and I confirmed this with him. I'm like, <laughs> it sounds good on stage, bro. Not bro. <laughs> Let me confirm. And Bob said, No, that's the date I was given. Think and grow rich. He said, "This is this is the universe. It's meant to be. It's crazy. Next right? generation. It's so insane. it's just content, you know, programs, courses, coaching, speaking, the whole nine yard. And this is what I love to do. Like like I said, like you gave me a billion today, still I'm probably still sitting here talking to you. We may have a helicopter on the roof. Yeah, but yeah. Like this is what I it's what I love to do. And when people see that authenticity, you know, like I met um, Tim Grover backstage uh -huh. two weekends ago, and he said, "Listen, he goes, if I ever come to dinner at your house, I'm gonna wear earplugs." Because mm. you're so freaking loud. But he said, I've been doing this so long. He said, I can tell how bad you want to help people. Mm. And I said, this is who, th th yes. Like, I, I want to give that inform this information to as many people as I can. Because it makes me upset and angry seeing so many people struggle. Like seeing families of four, five, six in Miami. You can look at them and they're eating. You can just see the stress on their face. And the stress is because of finances. Yep. I got so many friends, their mom still works two jobs. And I'm thinking, And they still go out on the weekends. Yeah, which that is a whole other heated. That gets that's me a whole heated, other bro. Story. It's insane. That's insane, <laughs> that, too. Yep. But I, I want to help as many people as possible become financially independent okay. so they can take care of the people they love and care about. And by doing that, you know, obviously I get to earn millions and millions of dollars, but that's what I enjoy doing. So that's what I'm going to do until, until I can't do it anymore. It's already done. The next generation. That's it. It's already done. Um, no, man, it's, it's, it's great to see, you know, the growth, right? Because the consistency, I tell people, 
if you keep jumping from business to business every year, like eventually you're just gonna, you know, you're never gonna do anything. Yeah, right? you'll bring yourself so out. So it's more like that long term mentality. And what you said right now, you're just 33, about to turn 34. By the time you're 80, right? 50 years in the game, think about, you know, like you, you could literally be bigger than any of the speakers mm-hmm. out there right yep. now if you stay consistency the yep. same way you've been consistent for 10 years. So that's one thing that yeah, I like to, to tell people. It's like, you just stay consistent. You just grind and forget about like the immediate results. Just go ham at one thing and you will see 10 years, five, five years go like this. Every, most, most of these guys got wealthy doing one thing. People get it so confused. They see like, am I let putting money in this and that and that, but you talk to him, which I, which I have done. Yeah. You spoken. Yeah, he He's spoke like, at your event. He spoke at my event. Paid him a good amount of money. A couple yeah. phone calls. He his his initial wealth creation was in like the same thing I'm doing. Mm. He said once you have a certain amount of money, then you can start playing this game. But until then, you focus on one thing. You know, Grant Cardone was doing the car, the auto, the auto industry for I don't know 10, 15 years, and then it expanded into everything else. Right? You got all these young guys trying to do. I'm gonna do real estate. And Shopify and be a forex trader. I'm like, bro, you're not gonna become a you're not gonna become an eight figure forex trader doing 15 things. Yep. I and you're know. not gonna make 50 million dollars in network marketing doing 44 things either. You know, do do one thing, get the cash flow, and mm-hmm. then you can go spread it out a little bit. But if you're an insurance man, crush the shit out of it. If you're in real estate, crush the shit out of it. Like, do one thing and then diversify. Kobe Later. Bryant got great at one thing. So did Floyd Mayweather. So did Conor McGregor. Everyone, all these all big, the big business ones. people, all of their, all of their big old crazy careers, they all started by becoming a master. One thing. What, what, uh, what, what do you invest on? Um, you know, cause I'm pretty sure. And I, I think the more you grow and the more money you make and the environment and the network, you get pitch ideas daily, yeah. right? Yeah. Businesses daily. Um, what it, what would you say is a criteria that people could use that you look for before making an investment? Right. Yeah, I mean, I've been pitched outside a, of your industry. Yeah, as, you I've know. been pitched a million things. Um, I mean, I sat down with Jake Paul in L.A. got pitched a app mm-hmm. called Locker Room, and I said no. Okay. You know, so I just I don't know. I look at things. Number one, am I interested in this idea? Do I like it? Do I love it? What's going on here? But I know I'm young in the game for sure, but even through my experience of doing these investments, the the, the clearest and best returns so far have been real estate and all mm. the multi uh, nine figure people and then a couple of billionaires that I've met, every single one of them have, have always gone back to the idea of real estate. Real estate. It just, even, you know, Ed backstage said, everything you see, man, we, we dump it into real estate. Mm. So... The shiny objects. Like, I don't want to see if it sounds too good to be true. It probably is. But some of these investments going around right now, they don't, they don't end, they don't end well. So what my mm. wife and I do is um pre-construction in Dubai. When it's okay. done, it's gonna be up what 25-30%. We did pre-construction in Tulum. Why Tulum? Well, they're building an airport in Tulum. Yep. I heard their, about their goal that. is to basically completely take out Cancun, which is already happening because Cancun's yeah, yeah. been there when I was a little kid. Tulum's like popping off. So we're like, okay, this sucker's gonna be through the roof. They're building like crazy. I was there last week. Oh, everywhere, week. dude. It's insane. So Tulum, Dubai, we own some land in Vegas. Okay. Um, we own a we own a villa in Spain. Why? Because nice. it's easy to lease out, property values are going up. So I think real estate is um is one of the best the best things to you know invest in um it's just it may not be as sexy because the, the the percentage return may not be the highest yeah, ever yeah yeah but um that obviously we have bitcoin and stuff i'm still a little i mean i'm i i i hope it goes crazy yeah right <laughs> it should go crazy but there's always a chance that it may not i don't know right so i think um spreading it out you know conservative investments all the way up to the high risk but you mm-hmm. got to make sure that you've got um, investments that are not sexy, but they're mm. good ROIs and you're good with, like I tell people, you rather hit a bunch of singles and mm-hmm. doubles over and over again, than try to keep hitting grand slam and home runs and keep mm. striking out. Would you say you took, uh, your, your risk profile change as you were growing in your career, or would you say you keep on taking the same risk that you were taking 10 years ago? No, when I was younger, I, like I did a, I did a stupid crypto investment yeah, deal. Yeah. 
put in a hundred grand, turned into two hundred grand. Then we put in like two or three hundred grand, and then the guy went MIA, like mm. completely just gone with the funds. You know, um, a couple a couple coins we made a lot of money on, like Shiba. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shit went crazy. But then another coin, hundred grand. See you buy. Going, buy. So I'm just I, I, honestly I'm at a point where I'm just I'm just over it. To be honest, I'm just over the nonsense. Like, give me, give me, give me Solid 10% deals. a year. Yep. Like, yep. I got, we got some money in a deal out here based in Florida. Seven and a half percent every six months. 15% a year. T- all day, dude. 15% a yep. year on a big principal. What, 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 like, how much do you need? Like, I'm that guy. Could my wife and I have a Lambo, a Ferrari, a couple Rolls's? Could, could we go build a, a garage of 15 cars? Yeah, we could. We have yeah. one car. Mm. It might be a Rolls Royce calling in. We yeah, have yeah. one car. You know, I got three watches. She's got a couple nice stuff. Like, we're just, I don't know, man. You get to a point, especially like when you find like your soulmate and you do all that. You just get to the point where you're like, dude, I don't give a I mean, fuck it. I don't need this it shit. It doesn't really matter. I don't need this shit. Let's travel. Let's get healthy. Let's work out. Let's feel good. You know, let's help people. Let's make good investments. I want to, I want to live in, I want to live in peace. I don't want to yep. be worried about this super crazy high risk thing and the investors mm. flew to uae can't find them there's too much there's too much too much schemes and scams nowadays i feel when that you know the more you grow and the more money you make the less kind of risk that you want to take you know you like i just want if i i, I have a good friend of mine he, he's running a couple of funds and he's like if you can beat the s p 500 you're pretty much good like yeah. you do a little bit two three points on top of the s p 500 that's all we're looking for. Yeah. And when you're talking to investors, you know, sophisticated investors, a few millions here and there, like they would just drop a couple millions and no no questions asked, but they don't want more than 20%. You tell someone, I'm going to give you 40, 50% a year. They're like, I don't want the deal. Yeah. I don't care what you're offering. I don't want it. Because most of the t- nine times out of 10 or nine yep. and a half times out of 10, it's bullshit. You know? So at this point, it's like real estate. Um, and then solid, solid funds. Like I said, this, this, this deal we were, I'm in, I'm into uh-huh. 15% a year, bro. What? All day. All day. All day. You put, you, you get 10 million in that thing. Yep. It's 1.5 million, one and a half million bucks. You've been like, talking about 100, that. 100,000 plus a month. What, what else do you need? You've been talking about that for a few years. And it's been like, in my mind, you said, um, I don't know if you remember, but you said you're, you got to keep on working until you have 10 million making you eight to 10% a year. That's when you're rich. Yeah. Million here, two million, that ain't money. Yeah. Ten million dollars making you eight to ten percent yeah. a year. But now it's even scaled but, up. Yeah. Because now it's like we're we're we 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 hate flying commercial. Mm. So like I'm looking up different, you know, jets and stuff. You can get a you can get a solid jet for two, three million, yeah. but it costs a million a year to maintain the, it. the garage and the landing and this and that. But like that's so now it needs to be we we need more. Like we need more. It is what it is. Like we want to have multiple nice homes and have a jet. Like once the jet's paid for and we build mm-hmm. this dream home, um, and we get to a certain point financially, then it's like okay. But we're not we're not there yet. And, and here's the thing, money is is an expression most of the time of impact. Like in the business that I'm in, mm. the more money my, the more money I'm making, the more lives that I'm able to you know impact. You know down the road when I have coaching programs. Let's just say it's you know fifteen million a year yeah, on yeah. coaching programs. So many people I'm helping, man. So I don't know. Keep stretching. You know, it's always good to have money targets. Um, How do you stay at that hunger level, even though I mean, because you don't have to be doing this. You know what I mean? You don't have to be talking to me right now. You don't have to be doing the events. You don't have to do any of that. Yeah. But you still do it, right? You're still hungry. You still want more. You're still. How do you keep yourself at that level? Yeah, I, I I think, you know, for me, it's just chasing my potential. And then I see, honest to God, and it's not even comparison because comparison is the thief of all joy. Mm. I don't compare myself to M. My Light or Grant Cardone yeah. or even Tony Robbins. I don't. But I say, if they can play at that level, why the hell can't I play at that level? And I go back to like, when I, how to stay inspired, man. I think about my, the past generations. Mm. Like my mom sent me this little meme the other day and it showed like, do you know how many grandparents and great grandparents and great great and it's like it's like fourth there had to be like four thousand people mm-hmm. linked to me in a DNA level. I don't know how many generations back for me to even be here breathing oxygen talking to you. So I'm like I'm thinking about what kind of struggles and pain and suffering did all of these people have to go through for me to freaking pop out in 1989 to have a shot at creating a great life. So I think about even like 
just a couple of generations ago, mm-hmm. both sides of my family had to go through tremendous pain and suffering. You know, the Holocaust and then the Armenian genocide. So I'm like, dude, if they got through all of that and walked across countries and carried their baby and food and came, you know, my mom's parents came to America with $5. I'm like, if they did all of that, yeah, they all, what am I going to yeah. do? At 33, go sit on, sit on a beach for 50 years? Dude, I'll, I'll be miserable. I'll be fucking depressed. Like, mm-hmm. I will be depressed not doing what I love to do. So, 100%. That, and you can hear it in my voice, man. Yeah. Like, I'm telling the truth. You're passionate you know? about it. You can yeah, feel it. You can yeah. feel it. The energy in the room, you can feel it. That's awesome, man. Um, I like to ask people when, when, you know, the guys here in the podcast, one big question that a lot of people don't talk about. A lot of people talk about the success, you know, like I made millions, X, Y, Z, all of that good stuff. And that's cool. But I want people to know also the other side of the coin. And my question is, what has been one moment in your career in the past 10 years plus, um, or what has been the biggest failures that you have had uh, one that you remember that you're like, I don't know if I'm going to snap out of this one. I don't know if I'm going to make it out. Right. Um, and how do you get out of that state? Yeah. You know, well, I've been, I've been blessed to have a pretty thorough, um, career. However, there was, there was, uh, there was a season there mm. where it was pretty tough. You know, my first company got shut down. I left two weeks later, it gets shut down. You know, I take a lot of the public blame for it. Like, it was on the Today Show. It was in the papers. I got written oh, up wow. in the Rolling Stone magazine. You know, it was, it was pretty tough being young and going through that. Um, and made almost two million bucks mm-hmm. in that first company. And then honestly, man, it was down to probably 80 or 90K after taxes and all the dumb stuff I was yeah. spending money on. And it, it got tough, man. Like, I, I remember, I'll never forget on Twitter, somebody back then when I had Twitter, somebody tweeted mm-hmm. me and said, I hope you and your family die in a, in a car crash. You know, I just remember thinking like, damn, it's not, I mean, this isn't that serious. You know what I mean? Like I'm a 24 year old kid. So I got to the point where I'm living in Scottsdale, Arizona. Mm -hmm. Uh, My rent cost, you know, too much. I'm over leveraged. I'm living with the wrong girl at the time. I'm 222 pounds. So I'm like 40 pounds overweight, unhealthy, panic attacks, not sleeping well, freaked out, stressed Mm -hmm. out. And I remember just like in those darker moments, just thinking, man, this, uh, this, this is tough, dude. And this sucks. Right. But what kept me going is the idea of if I can do it once, I can do it again. And I kept like telling God, asking God, Hey man, give me one more opportunity. I'm going to do it right. I'm going to do it with humility. I'm going to keep people first. I'm going to remove, remove this, uh, this unhealthy ego, you know, having a mm. healthy ego is okay. It's when you think you're better than other people. That's an unhealthy ego. Right. So that was a dark time, man. It was. It was definitely freaking tough. But it got to the point where I found the company I'm with today. I saw the writing on the wall thinking like, man, this really could be a big deal. And I remember in about one weekend, I made a decision. Mm -hmm. I broke the lease on my condo. I left the girl I was with. I returned my car. I I returned my car to the dealership, paid a fat penalty because it was Mm. way too early. I said, I don't (laughs) care. Bill me. And I left all my clothes in my parents' house in Vegas. I called my cousin Case and I said, yeah. "Listen, let's go on tour, and t- you know, and we're, let's let's work as hard as we possibly can to build this company. We're either going to come out the other end, you know, wealthy, or we're gonna, or we're gonna at least probably die trying." So my back was completely against the wall, and in that moment, man, I said, "You know, fuck it, let's go." A burning desire, and it worked out. That's for sure. My I'm- cousin and my, and my cousin just bought like an eight hundred thousand dollar home and. You know, Tulsa, Oklahoma, Let's and, go. and I get to do what I love to do every single day. So it worked. Successful. It worked. And a lot of people sometimes, they, they I feel they don't understand. Yeah, you got to put yourself against the wall sometimes. And sometimes, you know, we in life, we get too comfortable and, and we don't realize that there's a whole world out there that we, we could take over. We could see. We could, yeah. you know, empower people. We can do so much that you have to get uncomfortable. You have to get out there. You have to do what you feel uncomfortable doing. Absolutely. Um, man, no, it was great to have you. A pleasure to have you here. Um, and to wrap it up, I always like to ask every guest one question that I feel not only, you know, it helps you, but also helps the audience kind of like see what do you need. And I learned this at your event from Pace Morby. I don't know if you remember, um, but I've been literally networking and everybody I talk to, I ask the same question. Okay. And it's, what do you have to offer as Alex Morton 
and what do you need? Is there something that me, myself, can help you with or anyone in the audience can help well, you Well, you with? gave me an original copy of The Strangest Secret by Earl like that? Yale, so you already gave <laughs> me something. I mean, that's, that's super cool. Awesome. Um, but what I offer is the, for, the formula to help people in business go from where they are to where they want to be. That's what I that's what I tell people. I mean, that's that's the that's the pitch. That's the get me in front of your mm -hmm. top salespeople and let me work with them and we're gonna increase your sales, we're gonna increase momentum, we're gonna get these guys, you know, going. A lot of them are probably making hundred grand a year, they're comfortable as hell. But after I'm I'm done with them, they're gonna say oh, they're gonna be, I want hundred yeah. grand a month. So it, it's teaching the the principles of success, the foundation of success. And really the laws of the universe. Like a lot of the stuff I teach, like at yeah. Break the Code, dude, I pull up I pull up the image of the mind. I explain, you know, the uh, the five senses versus mm -hmm. the higher faculties, how to how to use what God already gave me and you to go out there and win, how to attract the things we want and need in our life to go to the next level. A hundred percent. Man, appreciate you for coming in. Thank you so much for you know giving us this time uh, to share all your wisdom, all your knowledge, and you know, wishing you the best of times and, and, you know, to keep, keep crushing it, man. Keep doing what you do. Stay consistent. And, you know, one, the, one of these days we'll be speaking right next to you at one of those events. Let's you know? go. Let's excited, go. excited to keep growing. Guys, that was another episode of Manny Talks with Alex Morton. You had him here. Um, so make sure go follow him. What's the best place for them to follow you? Um, Alex Morton on YouTube, Alex Morton Mindset on YouTube, and uh, it's about to be Alex Morton on Instagram. By the time this comes out, okay. it's actually going to switch from Alex Morton Mindset, hopefully, to Alex Morton. So just my name. and Just Alex Morton. And I got a Telegram chat of like 6,000 people. Awesome. I'm in there. So we're going to yep. drop the link for, for the chat. He adds massive value on a daily basis on that group. So we're going to drop that downstairs in the description, uh, down in the description, and also all the details to, to go follow him. Make sure you stay on top. He puts out a lot of great content. And, you know, feel free to connect and reach out. Most of the people that come here, they're ready to help you. So don't be afraid to reach out and send that message. Send that DM. Thank you so much for tuning in. And make sure to click the bottom subscribe and comment what you like most about this uh, podcast, this episode. And if you have any questions, drop it in the comment. Um, and we'll get back to you on that. Let's go. That's a wrap.